nice. Welcome to Back to the Basics, where you learn facts, hope you embrace it. Watch like shit, bring in awareness. Watch like shit, bring in awareness. I'm fearless. Welcome to Back to the Basics, where you learn facts, hope you embrace it. Watch like shit, bring in awareness. Watch like shit, bring in awareness. I know many of you watching this video have seen this flag before. You might have been at an African American Day parade, or maybe at a Juneteenth celebration or even on a vendor's table who was selling incense, natural oils, and books to elevate the mind. Whatever the occasion, we can all agree that this flag relates to Nubian people and it has something to do with their awareness of self. It is commonly thought that the UNIA, or the Universal Negro Improvement Association, founded by the great leader, Marcus Garvey, in 1914, created the red, black, and green flag. However, this is just not the truth. Much respect and honor goes to Marcus Garvey for his liberation efforts that proved to be extremely effective insofar that he educated thousands of Nubians across the globe before the internet era. In the early 1900s, he was very close to getting Nubians to leave this racist nation and go back to what is being called Africa today, establishing a nation of our own. But as always, any Nubian leader who talks about leaving the United States and going back to Africa is always seen as a problem because the last thing that the colonists want is for all so-called black people to go back to Africa because all the natural resources that makes up the wealth of the world is found in Africa, including oil. So whenever a Nubian leader puts our focus there instead of here, they watch them. And if they find that their people loves them, then their usual tactic is to first character assassinate them with lies. In Marcus Garvey's case, it was mail fraud. Then the elimination follows by way of jail time or death. The red, black, and green flag is the same flag adopted by the Moorish Science Temple before they adopted the Moroccan flag. This is the same flag of the Black Liberation Movement in the 1960s and other Black nationalist movements. Majority of countries in the Arab League of Nations uses the colors red, black, and green for their flag as well. But the fact of the matter is, this was the original flag of Sudan in the late 19th century, which was the flag of the Mahdi, Muhammad Ahmed bin Ab Allah, who was born long before Marcus Garvey and his flag was later adopted by the UNIA in 1928. Now, a lot of people in the West do not know who the Mahdi is, but this video will show you education. The word Mahdi is Arabic and it translates to the God. This guy was named Muhammad Ahmed bin Abdullah. He was a direct descendant of the real Prophet Muhammad. The Mahdi, Muhammad Ahmed, united the whole Sudan in a span of seven years, and he freed the Sudanese people from the Turkish British rule. The unique thing about the battle with the British is the Mahdi and his army of Ansars fought with primitive weaponry like spears, and the British army, on the other hand, had advanced technologies like guns, and they still came out victorious, winning this battle in the end. When the British came to Sudan, the Mahdi's flag originally had red first, meaning it was red, black, and green. When the battle was over, he made the flag black, red, and green. He said he put his nation of people first because they will never bleed again if he can help. The red on the flag symbolizes something evil perpetuated against us, which resulted in our bloodshed in Sudan in their war against the British invasion. The black is symbolic of the Nubian race, followed by green, which is symbolic of the motherland now called Africa. It is important to note that the Mahdi had two flags. One was the common black, red, and green flag, with the spare and crescent emblem. This flag originally included an Arabic inscription in white, which read the words, La ilaha illa Allah, Muhammad Rasul Allah, wa al-Mahdi Muhammad Ahmed Khalifa Rasul Allah, which translates to, nothing would exist if Allah didn't create. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and Mahdi Muhammad Ahmed is the successor of the messenger of Allah. For the Mahdi was indeed a Muslim, the white lettering on the flag represented the 144,000 who will be raised in the last day, gowned in white robes. The spear represented the weapons the Ansars used to fight the British, for they were victorious even though the British used guns. The crescent represented Islam and the seal of the Prophet. It signified our link with Africa through the line of descent. The other flag of the Mahdi was all black, 
and it had two pyramids and a spanning crescent with the name Allah on the top. This flag was the war flag. The present flag of Sudan was introduced on May 20th, 1970 AD. Now for the big question, how did Marcus Garvey attain this flag? You see, there's a concentrated effort to ensure that majority of Nubians do not know anything about the many black leaders in the 1900s. Many of their works are intentionally lost from history to keep our people under the spell which allows the evil one to continue to exercise control over the Nubian population. But that having been said, the stage that Marcus Garvey was to enter in America was already being set before he was born. And many blacks who thought they were free were advocating their own back to Africa movements. Nubian men like Martin Delaney, born 1812 to 1885, who was a doctor, journalist, and black nationalist, founded the first black newspaper called The Mystery in 1847. David Walker, 1796 to 1830, black nationalist and original proposal of Pan-Africanism in America. He published an appeal to the colored citizens of the world. John B. Rushmore, 1799 to 1851, abolitionist, editor, college graduate, newspaper publisher, government official in Liberia, and the founder of the Black Press in the United States in 1827, Noble Jarali, 1886 to 1929, founded the Morris Science Center in 1913, Booker T. Washington, 1856 to 1915, educator, author, orator, and presidential advisor, and Deuce Muhammad Ali, 1866 to 1945, a Sudanese Egyptian political activist and actor, playwright, journalist, historian, editor, and publisher. And it's not a coincidence that most of these new beings you have never heard anything about. Marcus Garvey developed a close relationship with the Egyptian named Deuce Muhammad Ali, who became the former secretary and head of the African affairs in the UNIA. Deuce Muhammad Ali influenced Marcus Garvey's ideas about returning Africa to its rightful owners. He told him about Al Islam, which means the peace. The Mahdi, Muhammad Ahmed Ibn Abdullah of the Sudan, and the red, black, and green flag. And quietly as kept, Deuce Muhammad Ali also gave Marcus Garvey his Shahada, which is the declaration of faith in the aloneness of Allah, most glorified and exalted. This is how he obtained the name. Mosiah or Moses, which is Musa in Arabic, meaning mercy or to be drawn forth. So yes, Marcus Garvey was a Muslim. If you notice, at that time, all of your leaders who have made a significant change in the lives of Nubians in America were influenced by Al-Islam. Whether it was Noble Jurali, a Muslim, Elijah Muhammad, a Muslim, Malcolm X, a Muslim, and even Martin Luther King was introduced to it by Elijah Muhammad before he was murdered. Deuce Muhammad Ali also introduced Garvey to the six-point star of Islam, of which he wore on his lapel. He knew that most of his people was not ready to universally accept Al-Islam, so he gave them what they wanted so that they would learn to want what he had to give. Just as His Excellence, Dr. Malachi Ziyar, also known as As-Sayyid Imam Isa al-Hadi al mahdi who was destined to be born exactly 100 years after his great-grandfather, the Mahdi. 1845 to 1945, who came as a guide as well for the world, has done for Nubians throughout the world today. With that having been said, Marcus Garvey made the national flag of the UNIA the red, black, and green going horizontally across it, and he removed the Arabic inscriptions from the original flag of the Mahdi because he did not understand it, and he also did not want to base his movement on any religious premise. His doctrine, however, set very high moral standards on its followers and remained true to the basic principles of Christianity. I would like to make this clear, that true Christianity and true Islam are one and the same, and both were plagiarized from ancient Egyptian and ancient Sumerian records. Over time, information has a way of moving away from its center, and that's the sole reason why we have to get back to the basics. Kefre, thank you if you liked the video, Press like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. Facts we stated, you wanna know something, go back to basics Most saw a trap and was called the matrix The world feel lies, yet it's hard to face it So I spread truth, hope you embrace it Watch.